Today on Crisis in the Toyverse, I get my grubby fat fingers around the first Gokin NT-02 Orokosaki figure. Is it any good? Is it fantastic? Is it amazing? Is it disappointing? Well, a lot of those emotions that I've just spoke of, it's kind of how I feel. So let's break down the figure. Let's take a look at everything and I'll go over everything, I guess. Like I've stressed, a lot of different emotions going on right now. Let me bring him in so we can talk about it a little further. So, there is no denying that First Gokin has done some amazing work. They're Krang, fantastic. Looks great, performs well. It's all that you've ever wanted in a Krang figure. Shredder, I want to say it's the same thing, but there's something about it that's just holding me back. But... When it comes to the sculpt, I think it looks great. I think it looks like Shredder. It's got this cool look thing going on. Very comic booky, if you will. And I appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. It's just, I feel like there's something missing and I can't put my fingers on it. But in terms of the head, the head looks great. I mean, no complaints with that. Shoulder pads painted very nicely. And the cool thing about this guy is he's also got die cast parts on him as well. I believe the shoulders have die casts. I know the helmet does. Um, the chest here, it's got this cool design on it. And um, do you, no, those aren't die cast. Maybe, no. Um, you go down here. Uh, the shin guards, I guess. Yeah, shin guards and feet. They have die cast parts on them, which, which is pretty cool. And then you got this cape in the back, which I will explain right now. I love the fact that it has wires in the cape. You can bend the cape. You can do some poses with it. That's cool. I don't like the material. It comes off as cheap, kind of second rate as it compares to the rest of the figure. So, yeah, I mean, it's really hard to describe. Same thing with this front piece here. It comes off looking cheap, and I don't know if that's good or bad in a figure that costs $120. So, that's where all this hesitation comes with this figure today. Another problem I have with it is pretty much the height. It looks great, it's bulky, but it is way out of scale with any turtle figure I have. And I'll bring that up more and the size comparison. So, once again, hesitation. You got these thoughts going through your mind and you don't know how to convey them. Which is a fancy way of me saying I really don't know what I'm doing right now. All joking aside, sculpt wise, minus the cloth parts, I think look great. The blades look great. I mean, hand sculpt, very nice. Head sculpt, great. Uh, the boots done very well. So, overall, I like what it's got going on aesthetically. Very nice. Once again, minus those two parts. Let's talk about articulation. So, the head. It's on a, I believe, a double ball peg system. So it can look up. And it can look down. It can go side to side to give you that shredder action. And it can do a 360 for that exorcist thing, which is very nice. The spike shoulder pads, they are on a hinge system that are attached to the figure itself. So, although not ideal, they you can make it work. So, those hinge up, down, and like I said, they swivel around. Um, in terms of arm articulation, the upper arm can spin all the way around like that. It's got a bicep cut. It's got a double bend at the elbow. And the hand is on a ball peg. So you can turn it around and move it in and out. And right here in the upper body, we got that uh, butterfly joint that allows it to go forward and back. Which is cool because then you can bring the shoulder pad in like that as well. Um, upper body, it's it doesn't really go up does bend down and it'll, it does have a cut 
at the waist. Lower body, he's got uh, these ball joints here that are ratcheted, which is nice. It, it, it can hold its weight, which is very nice. Um, it can go up that much, go down, and go back that much. Uh, cut right here. Um, double bend at the knees. Uh, no boot cut or anything to speak of, but uh, older style, if you will, uh, foot, foot articulation. And it's sort of got this hinge that likes to somewhat work, and it's got this weird pivot, if I can, right there. And it's the same on the other side. So a decent amount of articulation, a decent sculpt, and, you know, it does get the job done. You will have fun posing the guy. Uh, some parts can get a little frustrating, but... You know, the articulation is there, and I guess that's all that matters to those who like articulation. Could it have been executed better? More than likely. But for what it is, it's not bad. I don't know if it's $120, like, wow, articulation. But it's good enough. So let's go ahead and move him aside for a moment, and let's talk accessories. All right, here is a look at some of the awesome accessories that come with this first Gokin figure. So, to start off, we got a tree that has this nice Japanese writing on it. And we have all these weapons attached to it, which is pretty cool. Let's start with the toupee. That's right, in case you didn't know, folks, Oroku Saki has a toupee. And... Sculpted very nice, uh, paints good, no complaints there. And uh, I'll show you how this plugs in. We can grab my Oroku Saki here. So I've already taken the helmet off. So if you want him with just hair on, you just plug it in like that. And you got a shredder that is ready for a night out on the town. Now, the other accessories, which are his hands here. His hands are connected by a ball peg, so they just pop right off. Set him aside. And the blades also come off. They just got a peg system that works. So if you want to put on a different set of hands, you just find the hands you want and you plug it in. And there you go. He's got some new shredder hands to go out and party with. Don't know why I talked like a robot there. Other accessories include this very awesome set of turtle items. I don't know if it's a hint or it's just a nice Easter egg that they're including, but whatever it is, it's very cool. You got nunchucks here, sculpted and painted nicely, real metal chain. You got Donatello's bow. You got the Raphael size. You got the Leonardo sword. And you got an additional weapon, if I can pull it out here, for Shredder himself. Which is sculpted very nicely, paint's done well. I would have liked a little more metallic on the weapons for the bladed portions or the metal portions, but eh. And of course, the Shredder weapon opens up to create this double bladed tool that he can cut off Turtle's heads with. Or regular human heads with. Or anything else his heart desires. So let's do the size comparison. And call it a day. So here is a size comparison. As you can see turtles come in various shapes and sizes. NECA does theirs. SH Figure Art does theirs. Playmates does theirs. We got the first Gokin Krang. And the Shredder. The closest that the Shredder fits in with is right here with the Playmates one. So, that's another problem I have. I only have one turtle that this guy really fits in. And yeah, you can make it work with the others with perspective, but he's just kind of a bit too big. So, final thoughts. Do I like this figure? Yes. Should you go out and get him? Only if you're a diehard TMNT fan. Otherwise, leave it alone as always for tuning in and checking out crisis you can follow me by checking out the links on twitter 
and Instagram. You can follow Undercover Keeps by visiting their website and uh, checking out all the fine podcast offerings we showcase over there. And don't forget to use the hashtag Toy Lover Crew to feature your toy art. And until next time, friends, tally ho!